Hi, this is Nikita from Plum Cell Team. Today, I'm meeting Paul Norris, a systems developer at SHW, a property management company with multiple specialties, such as professional building consultancy, including architecture and planning, residential, commercial, and private sector management. They use Plum Cell Forms for SharePoint for fast and efficient property management. Paul and his colleagues have created professional forms for their SharePoint portal to automate all tasks that they work with. For example, here you can see tenant refund forms, see how each form, new, edit, and display are all different, reflecting different needs for different forms. We've also worked with Paul to support creation of more advanced forms. For example, on this form you see SharePoint list that has been filtered by two multi-choice fields, fund and schedule. In an interview, Paul will tell us more about SHW company and how they managed to automate outdated processes and improve their company's workflow with the use of Plum Cell Forms for SharePoint. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? Right. We're all good. Okay. Uh, right. Can you first tell us a little bit about your company? Okay. So we are a, a, a property company um, with uh, many specialties. Um, we have professional divisions, agency, uh, property management, building consultancy. So we do a, a wide range of um, property services, um, which obviously means uh, collating data uh, and passing tasks through the system um, can be quite wide and varied uh, and difficult to manage. Um, so we first looked for a way to uh, navigate away from sort of email instructions, paper forms, um, you know, or just post in stuff. Um, we wanted a way to log the work that was moving through specialist professionals through to administrative users at the other end. Um, the reason we wanted this so that we had an audit log of what was what, where where task was sat, who to chase, um, and just so that we could log back into that at any point and say, right, he's done that, they've done this, she's finished it, um, and that records there whether that that person is available or not. We don't need one person to have access to 20 mailboxes just mm -hmm. to check on stuff. How was it done before Plum Cell Forums? So at the very start, it was either a, a telephone call. So there was no physical record of, of any instruction passing, um, either or an email instruction from one person to another. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So very much end to end and no sight was given to anyone else. Um, um, or a paper form um, that was then sent in the internal mail from one office to another. Um, again, uh, not a great solution. So that was how we were working. Um, obviously, it's 2023, so that was not good enough. Um, and then we first looked at SharePoint lists uh, and originally the forms or the, the MS forms, I think they were prior to Plum Sale that we were using. Mm -hmm. How were how are they? They did a job. Um, the actual form themselves was not too bad. Um, but then when you dug a little bit deeper and when you try to retain the information from the form, display the information, be able to edit the information, it was then just, well, this is not very user friendly. Um, we've got way too many questions at one end. We've got no control in the middle and we just don't know where we are at the end. Um, so Plum Sale came along um, via one of my colleagues had seen it, had played around with it a little bit and suggested we have a look at it. So we just had a go. Um, we went in quite blind, um, but we found it fairly intuitive, um, particularly yeah, good, on yeah. the side of knowing what Plum Sale could do. Um, maybe not knowing the inner workings, but we knew actually if we use Plum Sale, we can do this or we can do that and we can control our data. Uh, we can segregate our data and, you know, everyone's a lot happier. Everyone knows what they're looking at. Um, <laughs> So that's when we, we started investigating in Plum Sale. Um, uh, and as things developed, um, we started with a couple of very simple forms, no real coding in there, um, just some straightforward questions linked to a single or multiple lists um, at that point, sort of like on a one-to-one -one basis. So we've got a list, we've got a form, um, away we go, nice and simple. Um, and then at the further we got, we thought, well, actually, let's have one list um, that covers mm -hmm. everything. Um, but then yeah, we so branch off into separate forms. And we then, if yeah. we need to, we'll have extra lists pointing into that list and into that form. 
and working all together. Um, and that's kind of where we are now. Um, so a couple of examples of what we've done recently, um, specifically on the property management side of things. So one of the biggest uh, or the most in-depth form we've got is a works order instruction, um, which is an instruction from our property manager um, going down to our uh, admin team who would then process that instruction and send a works order form to a contractor out of our third party system. So we needed a way to get that information from the property manager down to the down to the admin person without any of the detail being lost on its way or in translation. Um, again, like we started with previously, that would either be an email or a phone call. Um, it would generally be um, a property manager either guessing what those what the coding was, um, and I'll explain what that means in a sec, um, guessing what that coding may, what that is for that property. Um, it gets to the end user and they're like, well, you've got that all wrong. I can't even raise a works order. Let's start again. And you're going backwards and forwards. Um, so what we needed is some way of getting our property management system data into an environment where we could populate a form and allow that form to filter the options that they make as they go through the order, uh, through the form. Um, so that's what we've done. We have a, a, a batch routine, batch routine, which essentially pulls data out of our property management system ah, on see, yes. probably a mm -hmm. week. I think it's a weekly or maybe a 10 daily basis. The data doesn't, the, the coding data doesn't change that much. Um, but that, that gets pulled out, uh, gets updated into a list. Um, and it's mm -hmm. that list that then drives that form. Um, so within that form, there's certain filtering levels. So um, you would start, you would start with, let's in in this scenario, a, a list of properties um, of which we have about 500. Um, from the property, each property will have two or three funds. So that's the second level, and then each of those funds would then have anything between 10 and 100 headings. But those 10 and 10, those 10 headings or 100 headings, they don't have unique values. So it, it the whole line is the unique value. It's not, um, if, the, if the property is high street, the fund might be service charge um, or high street service charge. So those two are kind of unique, um, but then the heading itself will not be. So the heading might just be repairs or it might be electricity or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But that yes. those headings could then be shared with every, with another 200 properties. So we had to kind of use, we had to start at the biggest level. So the heading level. So we had to populate a list that had every heading, but of course every heading was then duplicated because it's attached to so many properties. It's linked to so many properties. So we had one list, which was kind of like the master data. It had everything in it. But of course, having that list, if we were then to look at the property reference in that list on the drop down, they would be multiples. So high street would appear a hundred times because it's got a hundred headings in that list. So we used a separate list, which was just for properties using the same references. Okay, yeah. So we looked up that and then we used the form, the lookup in the form to then say, right, that's your property reference. I'm now going to this list. I can see those headings linked to that property. And I've then got a clear, concise list of the only the headings that relate to that fund and that property. So it wasn't, it didn't cascade in the usual way because it cascaded down a bit, but then it cascaded, it boomed up again and then cascaded again. So we kind of shoved a list in the middle to break the cascade and it's, okay, it yes. just works brilliant now. So oh, we've, great. we now have a user at one end um, the property manager that's sending the instruction, they can pull real time information. So it's that property. I can't make a mistake because it's that fund and it's that heading. I can't guess it's there. It's in black and white. And therefore the instruction that then goes into the accounts team or the admin team is accurate. Okay. That makes sense. How was your experience overall? It, it's been brilliant. It's been, I, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy doing stuff like this anyway. So for me, it, it's good fun learning it. It's good fun. I, I like the I like the graphic element that where you can have complete control yeah. of how your form looks, how you can lay it out. Um, so, it's yeah. it's you can bespoke it to whatever level you want. Um, Absolutely. So on that side of it, it's brilliant. Um, understanding, I guess. I, I've always struggled with the coding and I'm probably always going to, I'm never going to be a master of the coding. Um, and that's fine because that's what plum sales support are there for. 
Um, but once we kind of got our head around, this is the form, uh, this is how the list works, this is, you know, how the columns need to be, whether they're a choice or a single text, and then adding in the different content types. Um, it's just, it's, it's been good fun to do. Um, uh, and it's just, it's just been a pleasure. And every time, sorry, go on. Um, every, every, every time we've had a stumbling block, um, it's, it's an email to plum sale and I'd, I've never waited more than the following day for a reply. Um, and generally first reply fixes it. Yeah, that's what some issues, some issues have been a little bit more in depth, but, uh, I've found that 90% of the time we're just missing something silly. We'll get pointed in the right direction. We'll fix the code in, or if it is a larger form, you know, Plum Sale are happy for you to send them a copy, an extract of that that data, and they'll they'll just check it through, and they'll they'll give you what you need. Yeah, we try to do our best to help. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've, uh, I mean, obviously for us, we we've got a quite wide scope of work that we do. Um, but even beyond that, I I can't see a scenario where you couldn't make Plum Sale work uh, as a form and a, and a record process tracking system um it, it's just it's so versatile Thank you. Thank um we are you. probably using less than 10 percent of its capability so it's probably quite scary what you could do with it um <laughs> but yeah it yeah. it works brilliantly for us you can do a lot, uh, and true. we you know we've got old processes which once we've got new stuff that need doing we will we'll switch it over to plum sale that sounds wonderful thank you paul it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for the interview. Let us know if you need anything. We are here to help. Excellent. I'll speak to you soon.